Continue to give God some praise in this place. Right, right where we at. Can we just say that, Emmanuel, one more time? Can we just say it like we're excited about God with us, Emmanuel? Emmanuel.
Come on, everybody on your feet, sing Emmanuel. y'all one more time everybody Emmanuel right there praise team sing a little bit softer father God we love you and we give you the praise we thank you for Emmanuel I said we thank you for Emmanuel in case you didn't know what it means God with us <laughs> we thank you for God with us on this, on this morning father we thank you for your spirit that's in this place your healing spirit, your restoring spirit, your delivering spirit, your resurrecting spirit. We thank you for being a provider. And we thank you for your loving kindness towards us. Where would we be without Emmanuel? Come on, where would we be? Sometimes we still don't get it right, but where would we be without Emmanuel to arrest us and to turn us around, to cause us to come to ourselves? We thank you for being our strength. We thank you for being our joy when we can't find it anywhere else. We thank you for being the peace that passeth all understanding. And <laughs> thank you, Jesus. We ask on this day, Father, that you loose anything in this place that's not like you. Any spirit that's in this place that's not like you. <laughs> Any effect of sin that's in this place. We loose it right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Have your way in this place. I said, have your way in this place. I said, have your way in this place. Turn over mindsets and behaviors. Have your way in this place, Father. Now, God, work in me and through me and allow me to deliver, thus saith the Lord. And now let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, he's my strength. And I believe him to be your strength. He is my redeemer. And I know him to be your redeemer. Let the people of God in this place say amen. Amen. Give God some praise for Emmanuel, God with us. Thank you, praise team. Thank you. While we're still standing all over the building, let's take our Bibles. Some of y'all know I've been under the weather, so please uh, forgive the way I sound. And God willing... I'll get through this without my voice fading out. Amen. We're going to be in Matthew 123. And then we're going to go to Hebrews 2, 14 through 18. Matthew 1 and 23. And Hebrews 2, 14 through 18. If you have it in your Bible, say amen. If you need a Bible, slip up your hand. Usher will give you one. Matthew 
Matthew 1 and 23 says this, and this quotes the prophecy of Isaiah in Isaiah 7, 14. It says that the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him what? Emmanuel, which means God with us. Now go to Hebrews 2, 14 through 18. If I can get the sound man or somebody to turn down, uh, I think this is auxiliary one, this, the speaker that's humming. Thank you. Hebrews 2, 14 through 18. It says, since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. For surely it is not angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. For this reason he had to be made like them, fully human in every way. We're talking about Emmanuel. In order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest, in service to God, and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people, because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. I'm talking about Emmanuel, God with us. And for a few moments this morning, I just want to speak from the simple title, God with us. God with us. Say it again. God with us. You can take your seat. Since the fall of humanity, we've been trying to make our way back to God, trying to find a way to get back to the relationship we had with God before Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden. It was a relationship in which man was so close to God that he could hear God walking in the cool of the day. You'll find this in Genesis. It was a relationship in which man could talk directly with God and be in the presence of God living in abundance without lack or without this sickness. It was a beautiful relationship with God where we reflected God's image and what God saw in man when he created him. He said that he was good and he was very good. We were God's prized creation and we were created for him and by him to bring glory to his name. God's desire in the beginning was to have a relationship with us and guess what? He still desires to have a relationship with us. Adam and Eve had it good with God, reflected God, and were near to God with nothing to separate them from his presence and his blessings. I said nothing could separate them from his presence and his blessings. But can you imagine their guilt after their relationship with God changed because of their decision to disobey God. They were cast out of the garden, cursed and subject to spiritual and physical death. Sin had to be judged because God cannot tolerate or wink at sin. So because of man's sinful state, he would function in life with the wall of sin between him and God. There was a separation. Isaiah 59 2 says, says it this way, that your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. Somebody say, this is a terrible place to be. A life, a separation from God in which because of sin, he doesn't show his face and he tunes you out. Through scripture, God will reveal himself and communicate through prophets, through kings and through priests. His word would be given and heard, and he would be seen as a cloud by day and as fire by night. Miraculous signs and wonders were seen, but still not close enough to us, so it would seem. Man would try to compensate for that gap by building the, the Tower of Babel to reach God, making idols so that, would, so that God would be right there in front of them, invisible. By rituals and religion, but with the wrong attitude, so that God would be pleased and even right living by obeying the law, trying to work our way towards God and be acceptable in his sight. But still, there was a gap. 
man had and still spends his lifetime trying to fix what they had broken, trying to find his own way with his own efforts. But all we really do is move further away from God. Y'all better hear this. Whether we realize it or not, it is the guilt of knowing that God is not pleased with us that sometimes causes us to do things in desperation because deep down we really want to have a relationship with God and we want to know that God loves us. But because of our impure hearts, we take on methods that have the opposite effect. We have tried to reach God through ritual, religion, and right living. We thought that if we attended church, that if we subscribed to a denomination, upheld all the ceremonial laws and cleansings, and were people of good moral character, even though our hearts were not in the right place, that that would somehow bring us back to God. Remember, we're trying to bridge this gap. But God came down and reached us through revelation, relationship, and reconciliation. God came in the person of Jesus as a revelation of himself, touching us spiritually and physically so that we enter into a relationship with him. And then he dies on the cross so that we can be reconciled back to him. And the only condition is that we believe that he did it. God couldn't have us somehow succeeding in our own efforts to get back to him because we would walk around prideful and dignified and giving glory to ourselves and God would never have that. So Jesus being in the very nature of God would lose his dignity but maintain his deity so that we could go forward in our destiny. Y'all didn't even get that. Y'all didn't even get that. Jesus would lose his dignity but maintain his deity so that you could move forward in your destiny. If you got a phone, you need to Twitter that or Facebook that right now. Go ahead, Denise. In other words, he didn't mind being humiliated and taking on the nature of a servant if it meant that through his life, his death, and resurrection, you would have the opportunity to once again be united with him. We couldn't bridge the gap to get to God. But God, by his own will, by his own will, he made a decision. By his own will, makes a decision to close the gap by sending Jesus our way. And Jesus comes as Emmanuel, God with us. Y'all ought to give God some praise. <coughs> if you notice in Hebrews 2, 14 through 18, there are three areas of importance of God being with us. It's right in the text. I'm going to do the first one, but I'm going to skip to the third one and come back to it. Amen. First thing the text shows us is that because God is with us, number one, he can destroy the devil who has the power of death. That, that's in verse 14 and 15. Now, remember this. 1 Corinthians 15, 56 says this. The sting of death is sin. Notice I said the, the first area of importance, because God is with us, he can destroy the devil who has the power of death. The sting of death is sin. The devil had to be defeated so that we, through the power of God, would be able to live victoriously. We lived our lives in slavery because we feared death. When you feel like you have no hope and that death is your only option, you live life like it's terminal fulfilling every desire and thought that satisfies the flesh and gratify what is temporary because you have no hope for the life to come. It causes us to live like, like there's no God in this world. And ultimately, we are saying we are God and we make decisions that are God's as if they are ours. Y'all listen up. We take it upon ourselves to control who has the right to live and who doesn't by going to an elementary school in Connecticut and killing the mother that God told us to honor and killing the dad that God told us to honor and then killing over 20 innocent children whose parents will never see them be successful in life or successful in God. I'm talking about the effects of sin, living a life in fear of death. As much as this is a tragedy, my brothers and sisters, these are the effects of sin. This is why Jesus had to conquer death, which also means he conquered the sting of death, which is sin. 
once a person makes a decision to receive Jesus and realize that they have life and have it more abundantly and that they have an eternal home in glory, they now live a life of victory, triumph, and a conqueror over sin and the evil that have affected their lives. But that's after they have received Jesus. The Bible tells us that death has been swallowed up in victory and that God has given us that victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So we can look death in the face and say, oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? But can I just say that since sin is the cause of so many other things, that if we have the victory over death, we can boldly declare victory over other things that sin has brought into this world. Are you with me? We can declare where, oh, sickness is your victory. Where, oh, poverty is your victory. Where, oh, depression is your victory. Where, oh, mental breakdown is your victory. Where, oh, fear is your victory. Where, oh, spirit of suicide is your victory. Where, oh, spirit of homicide is your victory. Where, oh, spirit of divorce where is your victory where oh spirit of depression where is your victory we have the victory through Jesus Christ who the Bible said disarmed I like this who the Bible says disarmed the powers and authorities and made a public spectacle of them triumphing over them on the cross y'all don't get that I said he disarmed them and made a public spectacle he didn't do it in private he hung on the cross and made a public spectacle of them triumphing over them by the cross I just need to look at your neighbor and say that the sting is gone. <laughs> look at your neighbor and say the sting is gone. Now speak to your situation and say the sting is gone. Say it's all gone. The sting is gone. I have the victory in Jesus Christ. The sting is gone. Thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph through Jesus Christ. This sick man up here preaching, I'm going to need y'all to get live up in here. Y'all ain't sick. Let's get busy. We talking about Emmanuel, God with us. But the second thing you need to realize, it's in verse 18. So I skipped, I skipped one. He can help us with our temptation. That's a good one. <laughs> this is a good thing about God being with us. He can help us with our temptation. We have a great high priest, the Bible says, that has gone through the heavens. Jesus, the son of God, who is able to sympathize with our weakness and has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet without sin. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 4.16 that because of this fact, we can come boldly to the throne of grace and receive mercy and grace to help in our time of need. Now, maybe that doesn't mean anything at all to you. Um, but I get tempted. Can I get a witness in the building? <laughs> and, and I need some help. And through Jesus, I get help from a Savior who fills me, who is with me and understands me, but won't give in to what I would do without his power, but gives me the power to stand up under the temptation. And the Bible said he gives me a way of escape. <laughs> See, the beautiful thing about God being with us is that he fills us. He is touched by us firsthand and we by him. So he understands how to treat us. I'm not talking about whether to treat us good or bad. I'm talking about to treat us as if we were a patient, as we were somebody that was sick in need of some treatment. Jesus didn't just come teaching and treating, but he came touching. I, I, I like that. And this is important for me as a believer because my confidence in God is not just in the fact that he taught me by his word and treated me by his blood, but he loved me enough to wrap himself in flesh so that he could touch me. Y'all going to get this this morning. Uh, one of the things I hated about uh, going to the hospital at times is that a doctor would treat me without touching me. I always felt that they couldn't really tell what I felt looking at me or just being in the room with me, but they actually had to touch me. In my mind, 
I felt as though the treatment they gave me would not really work effectively because they hadn't touched me. And I would eventually have to go back again for another treatment. Y'all going to get it in a minute. I, I remember thinking after a doctor visit, how in the world did this doctor know how to treat me? He was at least supposed to listen to my heart and touch the areas I complained about so that he would better know how to treat me. And because he didn't, I ended up having to go back again. Had he touched me from the beginning, felt what I felt and examined things that can only be examined by touch, he could have gotten exactly what I needed the first time around and I would be better convinced that he knew exactly what my treatment was. Y'all gonna come down my street in a minute. Well, God knew exactly what our treatment was, and Jesus did it right the first time around, once and for all, so that I wouldn't have to keep going back. God sent Jesus so that he could be with us, so that he could touch us and be touched by us. And through that touch, he has given us the power to conquer every urge, every desire, every proclivity. Every propensity to give into temptation, which leads to sin, and he did it through his blood on the cross. Somebody say he touched me. Oh my God. I'm not liking y'all today. I don't know where my organist said he's playing too much. God has given us a way out. The cross is the way out. Not therapy alone, not medication alone. Not group sessions alone, but the God who fills you is with you, and he defeated it for you. Beloved, your help is at the cross. Somebody say, he touched me. Oh, my God. I'm on the third point. But lastly, it's in the text. Got to go up to the one before this one. What is so great about God being with us? The text tells us this, that he can make atonement for our sins. This is important. This is doctrinal right here. This is doctrinal right here, that he can make atonement for our sins. That was the reason why we had the gap in the first place. I said he can make atonement for our sins. I hear you, Pastor. I, I, don't, I read the Bible, but I don't really know what atonement means. In other words, he can reconcile us to himself thereby making amends for our wrongdoings, which is sin. Does that help anybody in the room? That, that's atonement. We find that in verse 17. Making atonement for sins is not a New Testament concept, but was the responsibility of the priests under the law in the Old Testament. The priest would go into the temple and enter the holy of holies and slay an animal that was without blemish and sprinkle his blood on the altar. Then he would back out. The priests would do this by their appointed service yearly for the sins of the people. But the problem was the priest was not perfect. So how could an imperfect man in the same predicament as me, a helpless sinner, be fully reconciled me unto God? That's a problem. Hebrews 10, 11 tells us that day after day, every priest stands and performs his religious duties. Again and again, he offers the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. So we have a priest that has to keep working to deal with an issue in which neither he nor the sacrifice is able of dealing with. But the God who is with us, Emmanuel, comes as the most high priest that does a finished work on the cross and then he doesn't just stand there but he sits down at the right hand of the father because the work is all done y'all gonna get this doctrine in a minute hebrews tells us this in chapter 10 and i'm just going through scripture here the law is only a shadow of the good things that are coming not the realities themselves. For this reason, it could never by the same sacrifices repeated endlessly year after year make perfect those who draw near to worship. I'm writing the word. Otherwise, would they not have stopped being offered? For the worshipers would have been cleansed once for all and would no longer have felt guilty for their sins. But those sacrifices are an annual reminder of sins. It is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. I'm just reading a scripture from the Bible. 
now we see that the law and its sacrifices were only a shadow, help me out, or a pre-event to prepare us for the main event, which was Jesus Christ to come as the perfect priest and the perfect sacrifice that would take away the sins of the world. I'm talking about Emmanuel, God with us. I don't know if y'all realize how good this is. Maybe he didn't touch you. But he touched me. And even up here with this crazy voice, I believe that he's touching me right now. The sacrifices before were a reminder of sin. And it was impossible for the blood of animals to take away sins. But in Jesus, he has conquered it all. The God with us, Jesus Christ, came as a high priest of the good things that are now already here. He went through the greater and more perfect tabernacle that is not made with human hands. He did not enter by means of the blood of goats and calves, but he entered the most holy place once and for all by his own blood, thus obtaining an eternal redemption. I'm not talking about a yearly redemption. I'm not talking about a monthly redemption. I'm talking about an eternal redemption. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad that God redeemed me. I did everything I could to make my way back to God. I was desperately in need for a savior. I looked for it in women. I did some crazy stuff. I looked for it in the bottle. But when Jesus came, the Emmanuel, God with us, and he touched me and he made me whole. I didn't have to look no further. Y'all ought to give God some praise up in this place. I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed. Ain't nothing good about me, but I've been redeemed by his blood. I know you think you're cute, but you ain't that cute. You all that in the bag of chips because the God who was with us touched you and redeemed you. we looking too much at where we are and who we are but if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side where would you be if it had not been for the Lord who is on your side you could think of a lot of people that ain't on your side but if it had not been for the Lord who is on your side where would you be? see how you can be where you are and not reflect on where you were and think about who brought you here how can you forget how can you forget you're still here you're not defeated you're not conquered your mind's still right your health's still right your family's still together you still got your kids how can you forget? redemption
God with us. Not God just around us. Not just hovering over us. But he preached the cat. And became God with us. That means he didn't mind dwelling among you. You got sin, that's okay because I'm with you now. I know you live in a defeated life, but it's okay because I'm with you now. Come on, y'all, the God with us. the God who is still with you. can't be more excited about the gifts that we're getting and giving this season than the gift God with us, Emmanuel, that was given to us to take away the sins of the world and give us an eternal redemption. God reached past the sin of Adam and Eve. He reached past the curse. He reached past idolatry. He reached past heartless religion. He reached past rituals. He reached past our attempted righteousness. And he passed through heaven and stepped into the womb of a virgin so that he could be with you. He didn't just show up, but he know that for you to be with him. So now we're talking about God with us. But he knew that for you to be with him, he had to die so that he could be inside you. And then now you could be with him. So now it goes from being God with us to God. I got a good class. The God that you had been reaching for searching for, desperate for, went through all types of tragedy and chaos and bad decisions to reach him, all because he came to be with us and died for us. Now you have the God in you. Beloved, the gap has been closed. The gap has been closed. You don't have to talk to a priest in a box. You don't have to come up to the altar and see me right there at your chair, in your car, on your job, while you're just walking down the street, even going shopping in the mall. God is near to you. He's with you even in your spirit. The gap has been closed. He is the God 
who is with us. I can't even describe to you how precious that is. But I'm going to let that sink in with you for a moment. The God. God. Who is with us. Maybe you might not get it. Maybe you thought of yourself as something. But I'm talking about God. The one who before there was a us, there was a him. That God. Who before he even created us was like, let there be. I'm talking about the same God that, that blows those trees out there. That decides when it's going to be cold and when it's going to be hot. That the weatherman can't tell what the weather's going to be like because he's got it. In, I'm talking about a big, huge God <laughs> with us. That's precious to me. I was finished the sermon last night. And I was up ironing. I just was up. It's about one. It was about 1 30 in the morning I was ironing and I was listening to a message by T.D. Jakes and the guy just started singing this song he touched me and he made me whole and I could not stop crying 1 30 in the morning I was like he touched me and he made me whole I've been a quarter all my life Sometimes I was half. Sometimes I was just empty. But he touched me. And he made me whole. He filled my cup. And now my cup overfloweth. With the joy and the peace and the happiness that only God can bring. A savior who didn't just teach me and who didn't just treat me but he touched me God with us forever yeah God is ministering in this place. What an awesome time to reflect on Jesus. We say things like he didn't have to do it, but he did. And I don't know if you realize what you're saying when you say that, but he didn't have to do it, but he did. form of a servant. God, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for Emmanuel, God with us. We thank you for atoning for our sins, for redeeming us through your blood and reconciling us back to you. We don't have to fight anymore. We don't have to search anymore. All we have to do is believe. Right now, the altar is open for prayer. Maybe you just want to talk to the Father this morning about anything. The altar is open for you. Maybe here today and you hadn't really fully embraced this whole God with us. The dwell amongst us, God, who saved us and redeemed us. Maybe here today you're just saying, I, I need to rededicate my life. This is serious. This is awesome what he did. This ain't nothing to play around with. I am who I am because of God. Maybe you're here today and you're saying, I need to receive Jesus. I 
heard about him today. I heard about what he did for me. And now I understand it today. And based on my understanding, I need to make a decision to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. If you're in this house today, all heads bowed and eyes closed. And you're saying, I, I'm in need of a Savior. Slip up your hand in this place and say, I want to make a decision to receive Christ. I want to make a decision to receive Christ. I see you in this place. You can put your hand down. Who else in here? You know you need to receive Jesus. It's all about God and you. You need his power in your life. You realize there is no life without the life that Christ brings. the Spirit of God in this place and I promise you he can break up some yokes he can destroy some strongholds he can loose the shackles on your life whatever you need from God he's here and when God shows up he shows up with his power and he's ready to move all you have to do is believe that God can do it Break the chains in this room, Lord. Loose us. Maybe you're here today, you're saying, I need a church home. I know God, but I need a place where I can grow, where I can serve. Where I can be taught how to mature in my faith. If you're here today and you desire to be a member of this church, we ask that you come down and sit right here to my left. You're here today and you want to be a member. You need a church right here to my left.
just be prayer for all over the room. We're going to get out of here.